Today, we add a touchscreen to our 3D printer. A touchscreen probably isn't the first add-on that you want to make to your 3D printer. It's not going to help your print quality any, but it does add a certain sense of flair to the whole configuration. And with these screens that communicate with your board via serial, you don't have to make any firmware changes to use one, and they're compatible with a couple of different versions of firmware. So it's pretty easy to set up. So today I'm going to walk you through the steps of getting the screen set up, we're going to look at some of the configuration changes we can make, and we're going to add Wi-Fi to the whole config. And here's the touch screen I'm going to use. This is a MakerBase MKS TFT32, a 3.2 inch color touch screen. On the back, we can read USB drives or SD cards if we want to update the configuration or store our G-code files. We have the serial terminal right here. That's how we're going to communicate with the main board. We also have an add-on port for our Wi-Fi. There are also a couple of different pin options available for things like filament runout sensor and power off resume. And here's a look at the MKS. This is the MakerBase Wi-Fi module for this screen. You can get two of them for around $20. They just mount on the board right like this. The screen I'm using costs about $35. And if you want to add the Wi-Fi, that's another 10. So it's not the cheapest add-on, but not the most expensive either. Some users have reported that these screens don't work with ramps. I'm using the 4.0 version of the screen with the latest firmware. We'll check out that in a minute. But mine works just fine with ramps powered by 5 volts on the AUGS1 pin. So your mileage may vary there. Check it out before you buy one. But mine's working great. So let me show you how I hook this thing up. So this is the standard ramps board. And here's the AUGS1 pins right here. These are the ones we want to use. On the top row, it has 5 volts and ground. So that's where we want to line up our ribbon cable. So you get this ribbon cable with your screen. I'm just going to put the red line on the 5 volt side, just like that. And then on the screen, we'll go to AUGS1 as well. The 5 volt pin, it's marked down here on the bottom, is right over here in the corner. So we'll just make sure the red line on our cable goes down to that pin in the corner, just like that. And then if we turn on some power, it does have a very annoying beep on boot up but the screen comes up. And in the basic configuration, you can pretty much control everything already. I just have it set up on my test ramps board right now. I will move it over to log here in a moment so that you can see it work. And it really was that easy. I just plugged it into AUGS1 on ramps and everything seemed to work as I expected it to. Now I am running Marlin firmware on my main board. That might make things a little easier, but I think for the most part, that's what you can probably expect with this screen. Now they are highly customizable, so we definitely have to go check all that out, and we'll walk through the upgrade process, and we want to check out the Wi-Fi. So let's head into the config files. So if you head to the MakerBase GitHub, link in the description, this is where you can get the firmware for the screen. Again, I am using the 3.2, but you can just download all of this. So we'll just clone or download and grab the zip file. We'll head to downloads, we'll go ahead and unzip this file. We'll head in, we'll go to the 2.8 to 3.2 folder, and here's the raw archive file that'll have your configuration info in it. You might need to use something like 7-zip or WinRAR to extract this, but if you have 7-zip, you can just right click, 7-zip, and we'll just extract it right here. So we'll open that folder that we just extracted, and here's all your configuration information. There's also a decent user guide out there that shows you how to set things up, and it's going to walk you through a couple of different things. I'll link that as well. Now in here is where all your raw configurations are going to be. You can change how the screen looks. There's a couple of different layouts that you can choose from if you'd like. You could change the fonts. You can update the boot screen. But if we want to upgrade the firmware, we have to put together a few files. But the easiest way to do this is just to use one of their examples. So go into the examples folder, and there's three different default styles. You can pick which one you like the best. There's examples of those in this guide. Here's the blue style. Here's the red style. And there's another style that looks a lot like Windows as well. So back to our files. I'm going to stick with the blue style. I believe that's default, but I kind of like it. So we'll open that folder. It's going to give you the defaults for the font, which is fine with me. They're in this font folder. The MKS pick, this is where all the theme icons are. You can actually change these up if you'd like. And then we have a bin file for the Wi-Fi module and a bin file for the screen. But the stuff we really need to know is in this MKS config. So we're going to open that up. So all the stuff up here at the top is pretty general. By default, it is set to Marlin, so that's a 1, that's what we have. You can set it to Cartesian or Delta. You have a baud rate setting. You want this to be the same baud rate that you're using in Marlin. 
I'm using 250,000. If your screen doesn't start working right away, come in here and change this setting first. It's probably either 115200 or 250,000. Multi-language support, I don't need to enable that. Language settings, we're set to English. You can configure for one or two extruders. We have a heated bed, so that is enabled with this setting. The max target temps, we have 270 on the hot end, that's probably fine. But on the heated bed, I'm going to lower that down from 150 to 110. Here you can set up a pause position. That's probably something more like filament runout that you can set up. I won't go over that, but it's in here as well. And in the advanced features, you can set up, do you have a UPS? Or do you have a power detecting module for something like power off or zoom? Your filament change function settings are down here. Zero is for manual and one is for auto. I do have auto bed leveling, so I use a G29. So I'm going to change that to one. If you want to use that auto level button on the screen, it's going to let you do a sequence. Mine is G28 and G29, so this is correct. If you're using it on another printer, you might have to change that up a bit. You can set points for manual bed leveling if you'd like it to go to certain locations on the bed, how many points you want to do. The coordinates for that leveling. The travel speeds. And there's some things in here if you'd like to move the axes manually, it will automatically move the Z up 10. That just keeps you from colliding into things. And then we have our Wi-Fi settings. You can either configure it here, or when the Wi-Fi module first comes up, it will be an access point. So you can log into it with your Wi-Fi and configure it on the web interface. Since we're already going to update the config, I'll just go ahead and configure it here. We are using the MKS Wi-Fi TFT. We're going to configure it as station instead of access point, so it will connect to our Wi-Fi. You have to update your wireless network information. These are case sensitive. There's my network name. And put your password in right here. Here you can enable the cloud service. We'll just leave that default. You can configure your cloud location and port. I don't use it, but you could use it if you wanted to. I'm just going to let it use a dynamic IP for the Wi-Fi. You can get that IP off of the screen. It's pretty easy to do. But if you want to set it static, here's where you can put in all that information right here. And then the rest of the config is just a customizing section. You can add custom buttons and change up what they do. You can also change out how the screen looks. You can even flip it 180 if you need to, right down here. There's a whole manual on just customizing it that I'll leave a link to as well. So we made one little change. Let's go ahead and save this. And then we can go back to the files. And when you're happy with the config, you can either load these on a USB drive or an SD card. I'm just going to copy them to an SD card. We'll copy everything we have right here. We'll put it on our SD. Now we can mount our SD card on our screen. Our SD card's in. Now we can go ahead and power the printer up, the power on the screen. And when it boots, it should automatically start updating. It's going to run through all the BMP files, all the graphics files, and update those as well. If you added the Wi-Fi card, it will update the Wi-Fi firmware as well. And now the updates are done. We're back to the home screen of the touchscreen. Let's hit settings. We can check out our Wi-Fi settings. This will have your IP information so you can connect up to your screen. And if you go to about, this will give you the version of firmware and the version of firmware on the Wi-Fi module. We're on the latest version, 3.0.3. .3. And the biggest configuration change we've made so far was to the auto bed level. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So let's hit auto level. It is homing, so it's running that G28 like we saw in the config file. And it is running the G29 sequence. So that configuration update has been successful. Now let's check out the Wi-Fi. Again, I showed you you can get your IP from the screen. Back to the computer, we'll just pop open a browser, and we'll head to that IP. Mine was 192.168.1.145. And from here, you can update the Wi-Fi firmware or some of the web view items, or update your Wi-Fi configuration if you need to. You don't have to do the SD card part just for those firmware options. Now, you will have to do the SD card if you're doing a complete firmware update. And another nice feature, you can go to Printerface and control your printer over Wi-Fi. So we'll use that same IP. We'll open up Printerface. And up here in port, we'll just put the IP in. And then after the IP, we're going to use port 8080. Make sure you're on the correct speed. We were at 250,000. Hit connect. Now you're connected to the printer via the screen from that Wi-Fi module. So from here, let's do a G28. And the printer home successfully. So we got our screen set up and working. We changed some things around in the config. We went from manual leveling to auto leveling. You could change how the theme looks. You could change up the buttons if you wanted to. We also tested the Wi-Fi module. You can connect up to it from Printerface and do some movement if you'd like, or send it commands. One thing you're not going to be able to do is send it G-code, the SD card on the printer, or on that screen via that Wi-Fi module. And even if you could, it'd be way too slow and not worth your time. Now, there are a couple of other things I'd like to test. 
One, customize buttons. Can we add some commands to add some functionality to this screen? And does it still work with Octoprint? So let's test that and we'll start with the Octoprint. Let's pop that open. We'll select your device. Again, 250,000 is our baud rate. We'll connect. It has connected successfully. It seems to be reporting the temperature correctly. Let's go ahead and turn it on, make sure. That looks good. Let's check out the terminal. Terminal seems to be okay. Let's do an M503. All the information's there. That's good. Control seems to be working. We can move the printer around. Let's go ahead and make sure we can still send it G-code. The G-code upload was successful, and it did go ahead and kick off the print. So it looks to be working as expected. So that's a good sign. So now let's check out custom buttons. We'll jump back to our config file, the one where we changed the auto leveling. And down in this customization setting, here's where you can change up those buttons. So on the screen, there's a couple of locations where you can add extra buttons. You can put them on the main screen, or you can put them in the screen that it's available while you're printing. You can't go back to the main menu while a print's running. So your main buttons are right here. Your print screen buttons are right here. So to set these up, I'm just going to leave this config function button display one as default. One is enable. Function button, there's a default one for M84, that's motors off. No need to change that. I'm not going to add any extra buttons to the main screen. I don't need any at the moment. But I want to add two to the printing screen. And that will be for baby stepping. So we'll do M290, Z0.25. That will baby step a quarter millimeter up. And then for our second button, M290, Z negative 0.25. That'll be a quarter millimeter down. And that's the only buttons I want to add. Now, these buttons are going to use the generic button icon. Again, there's a manual all about changing that kind of stuff. For this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with stock. It might be kind of hard to tell which button's which, but it is a valid test. So let's go ahead and save this. And just like when we updated the config before, we're going to mount the SD card. And if you've already loaded a config once, there's going to be these backup files out here. We can go ahead and delete those because we're getting ready to load a new config. Back to our configuration files. We'll just copy all these files again. Load them on the SD card. We'll move our card back to our screen. Turn the printer on to start the update. Our update's complete. Let's go ahead and start a print so we can check out our new buttons. Let's go to printing. We'll click on our Vinci file, we'll confirm it, and it goes into the print status screen. We're heating up the extruder and the bed. And while the print's starting, let's go ahead and check out what our current Z offset is. We can just double click. We're at 0.8. We can then compare that to see if our buttons on our screen are actually working for the baby stepping. So we're printing, let's hit options, we'll hit more, and here's our two new buttons. Again, they're not labeled and they're very generic, so it's going to be hard to tell which one's which. You'll definitely want to do some updates on that, but let's just try them out. We'll hit this one, and then let's check what our offset is. It's now at 0.2. Let's hit the other one. We'll check our offset. Now we're at 0 0.105. So the increments probably aren't that great, but they're definitely working. So I'm satisfied with the touchscreen testing. It works with Octoprint, and you can create buttons that you can use during the print. That's gonna be really handy. Now all you need to do is print yourself a case. There's a lot available out there, and you'll be good to go. Now I didn't do any of the customization with the graphics. There's a lot of information on how to do that. You can change up the buttons, and you can change up the themes. That's gonna make it a lot easier to use. And it would be nice if the software that this screen ran was open source. Then we could get a lot more creative on what this screen could actually do. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.